you so much for joining me today, Stephanie. Really appreciate you um, coming on and telling us more about being a doula. For sure. Uh, so what got you interested in being a doula? You've been in the industry for quite some time. Um, and what got you initially interested in it? Um, I think like a lot of people, it was sort of the accidental doula. I, when I had my first son, he's, uh, he's about to turn 22. It's kind of pre-internet, you know, I mean, it existed, but no one had it at home. And I had these four books that I read cover to cover incessantly. I was really fascinated with birth. Uh, and it was interesting because although it was my first baby and I was the first in my group of friends to have babies, I really did have that idea that, you know, this is normal and people have been doing this for thousands of years and how hard can it be? And the day came and went and it really did not go how I expected or how I really kind of hoped for it to go. And the weird thing was that I was healthy and my baby was healthy. And don't we spend our entire lives saying robotically, all I want is a healthy mom and baby. And so I sat there thinking, well, that seemed kind of suckish, but well, I don't know. I mean, I'm healthy and my baby's healthy, so I, don't, I guess it's fine. And kind of swept it under the rug, you know, had a colicky baby. Four years later, I was pregnant with my second son. And my mom raised me with that saying, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, but expecting different results. And so I thought, okay, I don't know what I did, quote unquote, wrong last time, but I'm going to make some different choices this time. And hopefully I'm going to have a different outcome. And so the two choices I made that probably were the most significant for me was that I chose a doctor that was in line with my philosophical views. And that's something that I strongly recommend. You know, people often, they don't really know where to have their baby. They kind of just think, I guess I'll just go to whoever I get referred to. And I, I really discourage that. So I encourage people to research, uh, well, first of all, is to think about what's important to them. What is that experience that they're looking for? And to choose someone that's in line with that, right? So that was a big difference for me. I chose a really amazing family doctor um, who just loved providing care to, you know, obviously low risk people and help them have really you know, normal births. It was very sort of non-interventionist. Interventionist. And then the second thing I did that really changed my life was I took Lamaze prenatal classes. And I hadn't taken prenatal classes with my first son because we had really difficult schedules at the time. And I thought again, like, how hard can this be? What, do I, what am I going to learn in a class? And I really think that that was, you know, a mistake uh, that I made in not wanting to get more informed and more prepared. And, you know, the thing is, when I took those classes, what helped me most, it wasn't learning about the stages and phases of labor. It was me saying in my class, because I'd already had a baby, I knew all that stuff and I'd read those books cover to cover. It was me saying, you know, hey, I really, I really hate needles. I hope I don't have to have an IV. And the teacher saying, well, you know, in a low risk, uncomplicated labor, you don't have to have an IV. Research supports that. But the place you're going to, they do them routinely. So you're going to need to advocate for yourself. Oh, amazing. Advocate for myself literally didn't even know that I could say no to things in my healthcare. Yeah. That changed my life. That's amazing. That's an incredible story. That's great. I think that's so key, right? Is like just empowering women to uh, be able to make their own choices and put the power back in their hands. So that's great. And exactly. you've been doing this for, that's oh, what I thought to myself with, you know, after that birth was I want to share this with other people. And so I actually became a Lamaze teacher first. And then for okay. my very first class, people started asking me to attend their births with them. So. Oh, amazing. And you've been in the industry for like 18 years or something, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. That second son just turned 18. So. Yeah. Oh, great. That's awesome. And um, so what was the process like to get you to where your business is at now? Like how did it kind of progress? And you said you started just doing the laws teaching and then moving into being a doula. How did that look? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, I worked full time in corporate at the time. I did strategy and intelligence. So, you know, oh. nothing. I've done that before. Work. Work. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, my coworkers used to joke that I was probably the only person in the world who did competitive intelligence by day and then went home and taught Lamaze classes on Sunday nights, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I taught from my home, you know, at first I, it was my, it was really, I called it my self-funding hobby. You know, I yeah. did it because I loved it. And the fact that it made a teeny little bit of money that was, you know, bonus. Mm -hmm. Um, and then over time, I always say the job kind of took hold of my heart and then eventually took hold of my life. And I gave up my corporate work to be able to do this full time. You know, the thing is at that time, there was no such thing as a doula agency. Um, there were a few collectives sort of running about, but there was no one doing career as a doula and a Lamaze educator. 
right? Mm -hmm. It was something hippies did in their spare time, basically. And so coming from a business context, I was really, really determined to show that this could be a viable business and career. And so I have really been, you know, it's sort of very monomaniacal maniacal focus of showing that doula can be a career. And of course, what we've seen is a really significant surge in the last, you know, maybe five to eight years, where we are seeing a lot more agencies, we're seeing a lot more people making a living at this job and a lot more opportunities and just a lot more uptake in general. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's grown. Um, you know, I run two doula agencies uh, with about 20 doulas between them, and then a hospital program that operates out of four uh, four centers, four different hospital sites. So obviously this is something that is my whole life. I'm a doula trainer as well. Yeah. So it's really all that I do is everything doula. So of course for me, it's, it's obviously my career. Um, but I have a lot of people on my team that are the main income earners in their home. Amazing. Yeah. And so with the increase in, in doulas, you've also seen an increase in demand then, right? With mothers wanting um, this a lot more in the last five to seven years? Yeah, I mean, that has just grown tremendously. And, you know, one of the things that we've seen, too, in about the last five years, maybe even even a little bit less than that, is we get a lot of inquiries from partners. So it's not just pregnant people saying, I think I need a doula or want a doula who are, you know, seven, eight months pregnant, scrambling at the end. Yeah. I mean, we have, we're talking right now with people who are four or five weeks pregnant, who are already oh, thinking nice. about who's the doula that I'm going to have with me in this journey. And, uh, and again, emails all the time from partners saying, hey, I think we need a doula. So it's really cool. Amazing. That's great. And as you were getting started, like, was there any misconceptions about the field or being a doula that you kind of thought initially was going to be the case? And then as you got more involved, it just wasn't what you thought? Oh, it was, this, I'm telling you, it was a tough road. You know, yeah. 18 years ago, it was a tough road being a doula. Every time we walked into a hospital, they were just like, what are you doing here? Who are you? And what are you up to? You know? Yeah. Um, so that has been, again, something I think that a lot of people have pounded the pavement mm -hmm. to really talk about the scope of practice of the doula. I think a big part of that, one of the things that has helped is more structure around our profession. Uh, you know, the Association of Ontario Doulas is, is, is really big and probably one of the more advanced associations that I've ever seen in a province or state in North America. Um, so I think that helps a lot. People, you know, again, over and over and over sending the right message, but also behaving in a way that is that is within a scope of practice. That has helped a lot. And honestly, the last five years, I walk into a hospital room and doctor or nurse turn and say like, oh, wonderful, a doula. Well, that's great. Yeah, that's so that's changed a lot. It's made our job a lot easier. And I think, uh, you know, and it feels good to be valued as a part of the team. The truth is, if a doula is staying within their scope of practice, it actually fits really nicely with a doctor and a nurse, uh, and a nurse mm -hmm. or a midwife. You know, it allows everyone to focus on their what they should be focusing on, which is mm -hmm. the medical side of things. And uh, you know, and when they have time, of course, offering that emotional support is great or physical support. Um, but really, their role is medical, and ours is not. And so, everyone working really well within their scope is really just a, kind of the perfect environment for having a baby in. Amazing. And that um, organization that you've mentioned, is that something that you recommend that doulas get um, registered with? Yeah, I do for sure. Um, full disclosure, I was on the board for many, many years, so okay. I'm probably a little bit biased there. Yep. But uh, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. Hundreds okay. of hundreds and hundreds of, of Ontario members in that organization. So I think Amazing. It's, a great it's one. kind of us another support network as well. And probably some, I don't know, just some legal stuff as well that they help you with. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Awesome. And do you still attend births yourself or are you kind of just like full on trainer now? Yeah, I do. I do because I can't imagine not. Uh, yeah. and, and, and also I think, you know, as a trainer, I think there's a certain commitment, unless you've done a thousand births, you know, I think there's a certain commitment to um, seeing what's happening in our industry and in our local mm -hmm. hospitals and just really understanding how things are changing. And I can only get that from attending births. So I do attend births. I don't attend, you know, like when I was a full-time doula, obviously I have a pretty busy administrative <laughs> yeah. job in my, in my roles. But, uh, but yeah, no, I attend several births each year still. So. 
Okay, awesome. And um, how did you find that with um, like balancing a social life or um, as well as having the births? Because obviously I know that like the due date isn't when they're going to come. It doesn't It is not like a set time. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been kind of doing some research and I, I some feedback I was seeing online was just about uh, it being a little bit difficult to have a social life, like even, you know, a glass of wine on a Friday night or something like that. If, if you have a birth, uh, you never know when it's going to happen. So how did you manage that? Or is there any advice around that aspect of it? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I was the busiest in my career when my children were young. So hmm. you would think that, you know, now would be a really good time to be busy now that I, my children are all grown. But, um, but actually, I was busiest when they were little. And there's a couple of things that I found worked really well for me. For many years, when my children were super young, I had a doula partnership. So mm -hmm. I worked alongside another doula. So client, we interviewed, you know, with clients together, and they knew that they were getting us as a team, similar mm -hmm. to how most midwifery practices operate in Ontario right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's sort of like a shared care model, is what they call it. And so they, you know, the client for sure was going to get one of us, but it allowed us to have one week on call where we were the primary doula. And mm -hmm. the other one was only a backup if two clients went into labor at the same time, which, which truthfully rarely actually happens. Yes. yes. Um, and so having that week on call, week off call, it really did to permit more things like scheduling your kid's birthday party and things like mm -hmm. that. You know, maybe splitting up holidays. One person guaranteed to have lunch, family lunch, and one person guaranteed to have the family dinner, you know? Yeah. Um, so that helped a lot for those years that where that really made a difference for me. Uh, that being said, I also think most of that, that concept of working on call and that, that idea that you said of like not having a social life, mm -hmm. I really think that's a bit of a misnomer. And I think that's more of a psychological thing. Okay. So number one is clients rarely go into labor and call us and say, 911, I need you right now. You know, it's really actually hours of back and forth texting where the client's saying, oh, there's maybe something brewing here. Oh, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Oh, I've had some cramping the last couple of days. Oh, they're a little bit closer together today. And we really go back and forth actually quite a few times over many hours. And so, you know, those days when that's happening, yeah, I'm not going to go grocery shopping and have a cart full of groceries when my <laughs> client says, okay, I need you now. Yeah. You know, um, I'm going to cancel appointments that maybe I had booked. Uh, but most of the time I felt like things worked out. I rarely felt frantic about things. I mean, have I left a kid's birthday party? Yep. Have I left my own dinner party at my house? Yep. <laughs> but those things didn't happen that often. And when it's your life, the people in your life tend to understand that that's what your life is. Yes. And so, you know, going to a party on Friday night, it's like, yep, I'll be there as long as I'm not with a client in labor. Mm -hmm. And to remember even a full-time doula, who's only doing birth work is maybe four births a month. Okay. So four times in a month, you're going to have those, okay, I've got to drop whatever I had planned for today. Yes. Yeah. That's a full-time birth doula, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, they do maybe a, a birth or two a month and then they do postpartum work, or maybe they teach prenatal classes and they do a couple of births a month. So yeah. not everyone who's a doula is doing four or five births a month. That mm -hmm. would be a lot. Yeah. And for sure, you know, that's going to disrupt things in your life, but I think uh, what I always tell people is be prepared for, for whatever might happen, but really live like you're not on call. Yeah. So, you know, you know, having a glass of wine, if no client has given you any indication that they're having, that something's going on and you have a glass of wine, I mean, even if they called you, texted you two hours later and said, maybe something's happening today, yeah. you know, I'm not saying like, don't ask. Wine, but like one glass of wine, not that big deal, right? Yeah. Um, so things like that, and then and then yeah, sometimes you know you leave you leave a party or you leave something a little bit early. But overall, I haven't found it that disruptive. I do think it's a big commitment, and I think that's what people are paying for is having mm -hmm. a skill. Yeah, definitely having a lot more sense with some perspective for it for sure. So. Yeah, um, I, I've had people who sit there at home when they have a client who's due, you know, as, as brand new doula, and they just stay at home. Yeah, that's kind of hard picture. Right? <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's like, of course that feels horrible to you. No, yeah. like, I totally live my life. I mean, one time I was out on, out on a friend's boat for the oh, day, yeah. and my client, you know, it was only an hour away, but we were out in the middle of the lake, you know, and my client yeah. called and said, uh, uh, oh, I think something's maybe brewing. And I was like, okay, cool. We finished our, you know, our lunch. And then I said, we should probably head in. And yeah. then, you know, started our way back home. By the time I got home, my client was like, okay, why don't you come hang out with us for a bit? Yeah. Right? There soon. Awesome. So I think as long as you're not freaking out about it, like you can have fun, you can enjoy your life. 
and yeah. once in a while you're going to cut it short. Yeah, definitely. That, that makes a lot more sense. Thanks for that. Um, what has been the most rewarding part of your career, um, whether it's like training or just actually attending the verse? What do you enjoy the most? Is this like little moment when someone births their baby and you know the baby comes out and comes to their chest and they look down at their baby and there it is the most palpable and powerful moment that i've ever witnessed in humanity you no know, it's it's someone realizes that first of all that they're powerful as f right <laughs> there's this like power and and there's this joy and and I'm sure really it's like this big boost of endorphins and oxytocin and like all that stuff too, that we're all probably mm -hmm. again high in the room from, right? Yeah. <laughs> the pheromones of all of that. Mm -hmm. but that moment is like nothing I've experienced in life. And, and then for someone to experience that and turn to you and say, oh my gosh, thank you for being here with me. I couldn't have done it without you. And of course, really, your, you know, your ego goes like, yeah, thank you. But really, you know, it was their own power. Mm -hmm. and you facilitated that mm -hmm. that is really special role right so i really really feel it is such a privilege to be part of that moment you know yeah, definitely oh, that sounds amazing yeah and just the, the empowerment piece is so incredible i bet yeah. um so now um that you're so busy with all of these different organizations and everything what does a day in your life look like today yeah. as opposed to like five even ten years ago must have changed a lot. <laughs> it's always shifting too. <laughs> I know. I mean, I definitely don't think my life is a you know a day in a day in the life of a typical doula. Like I don't think that that's you know no. my life. Um, yeah, my life is a lot of emails and a lot of you know marketing and um, admin. You know, that's my life right now. Mm -hmm. uh, working with the doulas that that work with me in my agencies, you know, but a lot of it too is mentorship. So a doula that's, you know, calling me or messaging and saying, okay, like this is the situation, this is what's happening, what do you think? What would you recommend? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of that in my life right now. I think sort of a typical doula's life is probably, you know, checking in with clients and maybe working a little bit on their business and doing some marketing and setting up a couple of consultations with potential clients finalizing, you know, your prenatal visits with your booked clients, um, maybe following up. So one of the things doulas do is provide informational support. And so a lot of that is following up with really good websites. And, you know, maybe our client is really stressed about, I don't know, X random pregnancy issue. And so as a doula, it's looking up that issue, finding all of the great, the best websites, distilling it, making sure we're giving people information to make them feel, you know, confident and not afraid. Well, you know, clients go online, they end up with all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> we'll avoid that. Kind of help to narrow that down and just give the, the good side, the happy side. Yeah, okay, great. Um, and then you've mentioned a few professional organizations that you're associated with. Um, is there any, I know you'd already mentioned the one, is there any that you definitely recommend that new doulas get involved with? Um, and I know that there's a lot of different organization bodies, but DONA seems to be a really credible one. Um, could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so again, super biased. I'm a DONA approved trainer and I'm on the board of directors for DONA International. I'm the current treasurer. So of course, I'm gonna be super biased. DONA is, was the first uh, certifying organization for doulas. You know, when we look back to the early beginnings of the doula discovery, if you will, it was discovered by, um, by John Kennell and Marshall Klaus and two doctors doing some random research on breastfeeding in Guatemala that ended up realizing, hey, if someone's in the room with a laboring person, it makes that person's outcomes better. And they happened upon that by accident, but when they came back to the United States, they actually ended up doing some studies on it and realized that study after study showed when a doula was present, people's labors were shorter and there were fewer interventions, they were more satisfied with their birth experience, like just on and on and on, there were so many benefits to the role. And so, of course, I feel really strongly about the people who came together in those early years with that research, you know, with, along with Penny Simkin and Annie Kennedy, mm -hmm. and came together to form that organization, um, which today still remains a nonprofit organization uh, run by a volunteer board of directors. And I think that 
you know, there's something special about those roots and that history. And it's, you know, it's still the largest organization, certified organization for doulas. So it was a lot of, you know, a lot of breadth and value to that. I think membership with Dona is amazing. There's this really new, uh, cool new platform called Dona Connect where people can, members can, um, can chat. It's like a forum. Basically, it's a mm-hmm. forum, private forum. And, you know, I know Facebook can do that, but Facebook also has its limitations in terms of being able to find things and, you know, in terms of archiving and becoming a new member and coming on board and saying like, hey, I'm interested in X topic and being Mm -hmm. able to see the topics that match that. So, Mm -hmm. you know, Jonah has really cool stuff like that. And of Mm -hmm. course, the yearly conference and those kinds of things. Um, So for me, I maintain membership in my certifying and my training organization. So Jonah and Lamaze. Uh, I'm, I definitely maintain membership in the Association of Ontario Doulas. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, other than that, I think it's about people figuring out what is their niche? What, what are they going to specialize in as a doula? And then maybe they decide they really love, you know, spinning babies or evidence-based birth or hypnobirthing or, you know, any one of the other things out there that they might want to become members of. And, um, and all, I think all of those things are, are valuable. So it's just a matter of figuring out, you know, a doula coming into the profession is what's their target market going to be and what do they specialize in and then going from there. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, are there any specific complementary modalities that you um, think would be good to include in kind of your doula network? Um, for instance, I, I think I've told you I'm just finishing up to be a holistic nutritionist. Do you often see any like holistic nutritionists partner with doulas and kind of have that, that network together, especially if they're joining early on, like only three or four weeks pregnant, like you were saying, you can see a lot of benefit there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it fits really well with anything health related. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're a nutritionist, you're going to, and if you focused on pregnant people, you would get pregnant people. And then inevitably you build that relationship. If they knew you're a doula, then the next logical thing is, hey, will you be my doula? Mm-hmm. Um, of course, massage therapy, obviously yeah. that is, I mean, an amazing fit, right? Yeah. For sure, I would say though, in general, being a birth doula and a postpartum doula, mm-hmm. and maybe a prenatal educator, if that's something that uh, you enjoy doing, is like teaching and speaking with others, but having more than one thing and having some diversity in your, in your, organ- in your, um, your career is good, mm-hmm. because if ever one thing you know, isn't your, it's not jiving for you or you're, you need a break from one thing, you have another thing to rely on. So mm-hmm. we definitely see that people who are birth doulas and maybe they want to take a couple months off being on call, for example, mm-hmm. work on their postpartum, you know, just do postpartum support for two months and have that predictable schedule. Yeah. Uh, or again, teaching prenatal classes. Of course, we have doulas that are chiropractors, that are naturopaths, that are massage therapists, like I mentioned. Um, that are nutritionists. So there's all kinds of things that are sleep, you know, have that are sleep consultants. So there's all kinds mm-hmm. of things that fit depending on people's interest and who they want to work with. Right. So in the postpartum side, that's where you see a lot of nutrition as well. That makes a lot of sense postpartum, mm-hmm. you know, people are breastfeeding, they're still really yeah. concerned about their nutrition and um, fueling their body, helping their body to recover from childbirth. And so that's a really natural fit too. Uh, or again, specializing in sleep or, uh, and of course I think all doulas should really just have a psych degree because we end up, count, uh, you know, acting like counselors a lot of the time. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. I love that aspect of like, um, just like the whole psychological aspect of helping to empower people. So that's great. Yeah. Um, I guess I only have one more question for you. Um, so what types of traits and skills do you, have you seen over the years that make the best doulas? <laughs> I always say for me the two most important things two most important qualities in a doula are being reliable so that someone can count on you so your behaviors show you're reliable and that you can offer non-judgmental support I think those are the two most important qualities we can say we provide non-judgmental support, but actually doing that is a really different thing. And that Mm -hmm. comes from a deep understanding that our own personal life experience is this big, but the reality of people's life experiences is, you know, that big. And, you know, if I grow up a middle-class white person, 
then I, I'm never going to have the lived experience of growing up as a poor person of color, mm -hmm. but do I have the life experience to be able to, to support a, a, someone who is a low income um, mom or, or partner? Do I have the knowledge of racism and institutionalized racism to support a woman of color? You know, I think it's about being able to expand our views and understand that society lives a lot of different ways and understanding mm -hmm. that helps you to really provide non-judgmental support. And, and I tell doulas, like, it's okay if there's someone, if, you know, if there's a situation and you say like, hey, I would be a good doula for that situation. It's, of course, it's okay for you to say like, that's not the right client for me. But mm -hmm. I think a really good doula is someone who can get along with and empathize with almost any situation, yeah. right? I think if we want to be, if, and we want to have a career in this, like realistically, is we want to have, we want to, our, our practice to be broad enough that we can support almost anyone. Mm -hmm. And so I always jokingly tell my clients that there's pretty much nothing you could do that would surprise me. Mm -hmm. And it's really mm -hmm. kind of true. Mm -hmm. yeah. It takes a lot to surprise me anymore. People can say almost anything, they can do almost anything. And I'm like, okay, that's new to me, but like, mm -hmm. sure, cool. You know? yeah. <laughs> like I just really understand that concept that humans are very diverse and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that I want to support people where they're at. So I always say the best doula is the doula chameleon. Mm -hmm. You know, that you can get into, you can go into any family or any situation and that you can feel like, you can seem like you fit in there. You know, that's, mm -hmm. I think, the best doula. Yeah, that, that's great. That's a, that's a totally different angle that I hadn't thought about, but it makes a, a lot of sense. Um, I think that's really all the questions I had for you today. I so appreciate you coming on and taking time on your busy schedule and meeting with me. It's It's been amazing. You're a breadth of knowledge and you have so much information and it's been great chatting with you. I'm really excited to go down this path and uh, you've given me a lot of uh, knowledge into kind of what it takes and what the industry looks like. So I'm, I'm really grateful for your time today.